What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Another day, another dollar. Uh, we got my boy Raul out here in the room with us eating. You know, got multiple dogs. They can't all eat in the same room. So you're going to hear a little bit of munching, but it is what it is. You feel me? <clears throat> You've been warned. If you don't like it, tune in tomorrow or something. Anyways, we got Bitcoin on the daily and we got loads to talk about, especially, especially after yesterday's uh, last or yeah, the last candle, yesterday's candle. Um, we ended up having that move to the downside, right? A little bit lower than uh, that low uh, of the like two two days ago previous candle. Sorry, I'm sorry, just like dayception, don't know what to say. But yeah, two candles ago, that low. So coming in at like 37,481. Uh, we wicked below just a smidge, but we ended up getting bought back up. And to me, that is a big sign of strength right here. Uh, especially closing back above the 10 exponential and above our resistance right here coming in at like $40,000. So, um, like I said, you know, as long as we're kind of above the 200 exponential, I'm looking for that move back up to 50 K well, 45 K. And then we'll talk about the boxy region, right? Our bull trap zone. I do expect price action to actually like get up in here, maybe even wick up here, maybe spend a few candles up here, but ultimately top. Uh, some type of topping formation within the box between about $45,000 and $50,000. That's what I'm looking for. And then probably a retest of about thirty-five dollars to $36,000, maybe even lower, but I'd like to see that in real time. <clears throat> but yeah, that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. Now, what would go ahead and validate that theory of a bull trap? Of course, a daily candle or higher, preferably higher, um, above $51,000. So like $51K and above is what I'm looking for. But... Um, yeah, I think it's pretty high odds that we go ahead and retest the low, especially since, you know, we do still have like a macro daily downtrend. Yes, in the short term, we kind of did just put in our first higher low and like kind of significant higher low at that in, uh, well, months. And so I do think things are changing around. Like we said, we need to really watch the Stokes on this one, right? Because the daily Stokes have been really great this whole year, catching literally every single turning point. But... We ended up having a few changes of behavior that we uh, denoted yesterday. First, we broke out above this trend line right here, and we got back in the overbought region. And so I was saying, like, yes, the daily Stokes haven't failed us yet, but I would go. I would like to go ahead and see uh, how they operate now that we are technically in a new phase of this market, uh, from what the Stokes are saying. And so we are going to have another chance to go ahead and I feel like I say this every day, but <laughs> confirm a candle below the overbought region. Because I think, yeah, we're not quite, we, we quite haven't done it yet, or we kind of did. Mm, I'd go ahead and wait till after today's candle. I know I've been saying that for like the past four days, but one more day, one more day. Can you do that for me, guys? Just one more day. But yeah, <clears throat> and if I have to guess, I think these bad boys are probably going to be itching to cross around real soon. And after a test of the overbought region, uh, that's going to be just a sign of strength, at least in the short term for me. <clears throat> so yeah got a lot going on right there looking really good i think we also have the weekly closures on um cmes coming tomorrow morning for me uh probably night for you guys but so we'll go ahead and dive into those tomorrow again i gotta go ahead and pick up a car uh here soon so i can't be too long i i'm just not like replying to somebody who's like gonna take me to get it i know they're helping me out but <sighs> priorities right you know you got i'm saying you guys are a priority but anyways Moving on, or should we move on real quick? Let me just make sure I got everything. I know I'm like moving super fast. Uh, HVP, I think this is a big one to go ahead and talk about. We finally got that uptick or will on this next closure. And so that will go ahead and denote an expansive posture, which means things are going to be heating up really quick. And I mean like wider ranges. Uh, yeah, wider ranges and faster price action. So buckle up, boys and girls. Things are going to get crazier. Uh, things have been pretty mild manner, if you ask me. Pretty boring, in fact. I know I got a few long positions open right now. Short term, short term. What? No, I got a. Ah, I bit my tongue. Ooh, I got a short term, long position, and I, I like a medium term long position uh, open right now. So yeah, we'll go ahead and see how those both work out. And if you guys are curious on what I'm doing for those positions, um, go ahead and leave a comment. I'll share it in the next video. But yeah, back to Ethereum. On the daily, man, uh, it's in my eyes. We've already tested pretty much our resistance coming in around like twenty eight, twenty nine thousand dollars or twenty eight hundred dollars, twenty nine hundred dollars. Sorry. <laughs> Hopefully, it gets up there to twenty eight thousand dollars. But yeah, 
close enough is close enough. I mean, it's like fifty-five dollars away from what we were going, what we were targeting. So yeah, definitely that was a test. And after yesterday's price action of us getting like literally bought back up and closing right at resistance, like I'm expecting more continuation. Again, nothing but a sign of strength. And uh, <laughs> what would be pretty crazy is if this weekend we just keep on going up because you know how weekends go. We just keep doing the same thing. Uh, just a little bit slower and so I wouldn't be surprised if we actually come back up to about $3,300 uh, to be real but that is all contingent on us closing a daily above about you know $2,900 so $2,900 daily closure first and then I'd go ahead and target about $3,300 now that we're getting up there and or at least have the chance to kind of get up to those higher regions we need to talk about this yellow horizontal that I got right here so <clears throat> this horizontal is supposed to reflect the same price gap that CMEs have way back from you know 17 May and so it's supposed to kind of reflect that because that technically well hasn't really wait no am I smoking crack am I talking about a three-day price gap yo and I've had this on here for months geez I don't know what I was thinking still no there is no still that was filled sorry guys I don't know what I was seeing over there my bad my apologies we'll go ahead and remove it i thought that gap was still open i did not see that wick we're all human you feel me anyways we got rid of it but thirty three hundred dollars now that's going to be a really uh, important area for me still um just because that was our like initial breakdown candle and typically um uh, the when you first uh test your breakout candle or breakdown candle um it's going to be a pullback so that's good. And I'm not saying it's going to be like all the way back down to lows. I do think it's probably going to come back down to, you know, probably like $2,900 if you got to ask me. But be cognizant of that. If we did want to go ahead and play out and move to the downside, where would I be looking towards? Well, first, we'd have to take out this low right here around like $24.9. Um, my ride's going to be here soon. So we got to hurry up. <laughs> around like $24.9. Um, yeah, over here. Sorry. And then I would go ahead and target the perfect 55 and red 89. Now, if we start closing dailies below there, which I don't think is what's going to happen, especially after yesterday's closure. Um, now, if we close dailies below there, I would go ahead and target the 200 exponential after that. And I do think that would be probably a considerable bounce, if not back up to, you know, $2,500, uh, $2,600. But again, I don't think that scenario is what's playing right here. This is looking like pure continuation to me. Uh, especially, you know, you can't, you can't fight these daily stokes right here that are literally just trending to the upside. Uh, like I said, as long as they're in the overbought region, they can do whatever they want. They can go up, down, sideways, backwards, forwards. doesn't matter to me as long as they're up there. Uh, once they go ahead and leave the overbought region, that's when we'll go ahead and talk about a little bit more downside or possibly just consolidation at best. <clears throat> Let's see, what else do we have here? I think that kind of just wraps it up. We could go ahead and take a look at it on the four hour. I was doing six hours, but I think four hours are a little bit more interesting right here. Yeah, so looking really solid right here. And Stokes are about to enter the overbought region. Uh, where would I be targeting next? I'm still targeting around like $2,900 to be fair. Uh, move to the downside. Mm, if we close below 10 exponential, I'd go ahead and target. I'll move probably back down to about $2,600. <clears throat> but this is all looking really good. Uh, RSI on the short term has been trending in the, uh, what's it called? Bullish control zone for, you know, like a week now. And this is what you really want to see when, uh, price action at least you know well on any time frame is generally bullish you want to see the rsi kind of just you know favoring one one side uh if it's bearish you'll typically see it favor you know the uh bearish control zone there we go but yeah all looking pretty good i mean no complaints on this price action at least on the short term longer term that's a little bit of a different story but that's not what you guys are here for let's take a look at telecoin telecoin really struggling here <laughs> Like we pop back up, close above the 200 exponential. So typically, or technically, my uh, my range is still apply, right? We we went ahead and updated it. We were saying if we close below 200 exponential, we'd likely get that move back down to you know just over one cent. Uh, did not get it, got a fake out. Uh, so now I'd go ahead and switch that up a little bit. If we get a daily closure below the 200 simple, that'd be my continuation point for at least a move back down to you know just over one one and a half cent maybe even down to the 377 that 377 target though is a little bit more of a long shot and probably less likely to actually get hit 
<clears throat> now, continuation for the upside, that's going to be a different story. Um, we'd like to go ahead and see a daily closure above the purple 55 or red 89. And then I'd go ahead and extend targets back up to about, you know, two and a half cents, probably a short term pullback on the lower or yeah, a lower term time frame pullback and then probably off to about three cent region now. Um, yes, Telecoin has big ranges, right? There is a caveat to all this. Um, things are looking pretty nasty for Telecoin right here. First off, when you're like struggling to go ahead and maintain the 200 exponential, that's definitely not a sign of strength, especially with your daily Stokes nosedive, and that typically denotes a little bit more downside. And we are, in fact, in a daily downtrend. We are not in uptrend, even on any of these. Uh, we have not put in an actual like higher low, and we need to go ahead and get above about three, uh, <laughs> stuttering super hard we need to get above the three cent region over here uh this last high coming in on like 30 june in order to even talk about a reversal at this point so again very far away there is a lot of pressure down uh again make sure you guys are using good risk management again it's not financial advice i'm not a financial advisor but i'm really hoping for you guys uh aren't making stupid decisions if you're like oh god l let's just see how this plays out um you're probably not in the right right state of mind and you need to rethink your decisions, uh, if you ask me. Typically, every time I've made that where I was like, eh, we'll just let it ride. We'll see how it goes. Always lost money. Not once have I been like, yep, that was a good idea. Uh, you definitely made a fat bankroll. No, definitely did not. Took a hit to my wallet, son. Anyways, Ethereum Classic. Ethereum Classic is the one that makes me just so confident about this market, man. We got higher lows. We don't have higher highs just yet, but consolidating, looking really strong. And I'm still targeting to move back up to $58. Like we were like hypothesizing. Uh, I don't even know if that's a word. Hopefully it is. Uh, trying to sound smart out here for y'all, but <laughs> um, I do think we kind of front ran that with this candle right over here on 26 July. And so uh, if anything, we probably have a short term pullback on lower term time frames around like $58, but I do expect continuation all the way up to about 68 bucks. <clears throat> now, how are we gonna judge continuation of the downside? Well, if we get a daily candle closure below the red 89 exponential coming in at like $46, I would target to move back down the 200 exponential coming in around like 37 bucks. Uh, again, even if we did come back down there, uh, even if we went down there and closed like at like 40 bucks, that's still just another higher low, so. Ethereum Classic is looking really good and has a lot of room to wiggle right here. HVP, stupid low on here, so things are going to get crazy. And I can tell you, your Ethereum Classic people, I'm sure you guys are tired of this consolidation. Everything else is just like going up and you guys have been going sideways. Uh, Stokes, there. Stokes do have like this trend line that seems to be fairly respected right here. Uh, if we do get up to that $58 region, I would expect the Stokes to actually break this trend line. And this was like a uh, hypothetical trend line. It's still not even really confirmed just yet. Uh, if Stokes actually turn down and leave the bullish control zone from here, I would count that as a confirmed uh, trend line at that point. This would look like a test again. Trend line on stochastics and stuff like that. Well, trend lines in general are just a regression, right? You just got kind of got to be in the area. That's why I don't really like using uh, trend lines for price action because it's kind of subjective. Once you get up high enough, like any like a little bit of change within your trend line is just going to cause like you know multi hundred dollar uh, changes and if you're on bitcoin multi thousand dollar worth of changes so that's why i don't really like use them that's why i usually just use my horizontal support and resistance but yeah so looking all good yeah nothing really too much to say there and we'll go ahead and wrap it up like that because i need to get this car so i'll see you guys tomorrow and have a good one don't lose money